Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever this is being aired. My name is Pastor Neil, and I'm the new pastor for the Chaplain of Peace Christian School. And so today, for my devotional, I've decided to go with Living Beyond Obedience. Our scripture is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. But before that, I have an amazing story that I'd like to share with you all. One day, a farmer on leaving for a long trip called his son and gave to him specific instructions. He told him, while I'm gone, I want you to reap the harvest and plant fresh seeds for the next harvest. The son, being an obedient lad, reaped the harvest and planted the seeds. As the farmer was returning to the farm, he noticed that the land was filled with seeds. In between the weeds, he saw evidence of crop that was planted. He was furious. He could not believe his son had allowed the weeds to take over the land. He hurried home to find his son. On arriving home and calling his son to report, he asked him, Son, did you do everything that I asked you to do? Yes, Dad, the son replied. The crop is in the field and the harvest is in the barn. The father was shocked. The harvest is still in the barn? You did not sell the produce and the crop is in the field? A field that is overgrown with weeds? Yes, Dad, the lad said. You told me to harvest the crop, not to sell it, and to plant the seeds, not to tend it. I did what you told me to do. With that, the father turned away from his son with tears in his eyes. The produce in the barn had long since rotted and the crop in the field could not be saved. The boy was obedient. He did just what he was told and nothing more. But he certainly did not please the father. He acted more like a servant than a son. For a servant may not profit from the master's success, but the son inherits his father's wealth. So often we focus on obeying rather than pleasing. We behave like the servants rather than the sons. We cannot focus our lives for rules to obey. We must have a principle by which our lives are governed. This principle would take us beyond the region of any laws. Today, Brothers and sisters, I want to take you on a journey beyond obedience. Let's open up our Bibles, if you have your Bibles at home, to Mark chapter 14, verse 3 to 5. And it reads this, And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flack of very costly oil of spikenard. Then he, she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence or denarii. And they criticized her sharply. As you can see in this story, we pick up that Jesus was among the crowd in Jerusalem. And here he was sitting with Simon, the leper, and the woman comes in. We then find out that it is a, her name is Mary Magdalene or Mary of Bethany. There was an opportunity for her to do something amazing for Jesus, and she did not hesitate. But to others, they scornfully looked at her and said, What a waste of oil. This could have been given to someone else. She caught them by surprise. The chatter in the room ceased. Everyone paid attention to the action of the lady. No one expected a woman to be so bold as to perform such an act in public. But she was not an ordinary woman. She was different. Jesus had cast out seven demons out of her and gave her a new lease on life. She's the one who found a plot of land with the pearl present. She had gladly given up all to purchase that, this piece of land. She had found the Messiah in Jesus Christ, and her greatest desire was to please Him. This ointment did not come cheaply. 
She had diligently saved day in and day out to get enough money to purchase it. In fact, the cost of ointment would have placed it at around 300 pence, which would be on average during those times an annual salary of an ordinary laborer. And yet, for her as a woman, she may have taken double or twice the time to get that money. So, here she is, wanting to show her love and her care for the Messiah who had done so much with her. She wanted to express her affection for Jesus. Inside of her, she was bursting, wanting to show Christ how much she lovingly thanked Him. How badly did she want to do something for Jesus that she was bursting at the seams? I believe at times too many people want to do something, but it's mostly for themselves. But here, with this example of Mary Magdalene, it was something for someone else. A lot of us, we want to go to the house of God. We want to offer something cheap for our offering. Sometimes we just offer our mouths. But we don't really show appreciation. But what Mary Madeline did, she showed the greatest love in that she gave whatever she could, she could at her great expense and according to what she could afford. Now, I'm not saying that we can't do such actions and it doesn't mean anything, but when it comes to our offering, if we can offer more, then we should. We should be like that widow with a mite who offered all that she could, despite it was so small. But when it comes to giving our offerings to God, let us not hesitate, but to please Him, to give beyond so that we can bless others. Mary did not only sacrifice money to purchase the ointment, she sacrificed time as well. Who knows how long it took for her to choose the right type of ointment. The ointment with just the correct type of odor. She did not just pick up an, any old ointment to bring to the anointing for a special occasion, but it tells us in the Bible that it was spicknard. She also took time to anoint Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we all know how we want to spend our time is up to us, but we cannot be doing two things at the same time. Mary chose to use this time to anoint Jesus rather than to be elsewhere. It was the Sabbath day when she had nothing else to do but to do as God command. It was not a question of obedience. It was a question of determination on her part to please. How much time do we vote our things to God? 24 hours? The Sabbath day? We have been commanded to do this and we do what we feel is okay. We've done our part. We've done what we've been asked to do. But God calls us to use our time wisely. Consider carefully how we use our time during the week. How do, we how do we please by the way we use it? Who do we please? Do we please ourselves, our spouse, our children? If we profess to love God, then pleasing Him should be a priority on our list. We know that spending time with Him is something that He delights in. A great example of someone who spent time was Enoch, who walked with God. He spent time with God. And by spending time with Him, we can learn so much about Him. These are the ways we can spend with Him. We can read His Word. We can listen to amazing sermons. We can listen to songs which uplift Him, surround ourselves with information about our God. We cannot go wrong. The other sacrifice Mary made in order to please Jesus was pride. When we speak about pride, we're speaking about self, selfish pride the type of pride that prevents us from doing things for Jesus Christ. Mary did not allow the presence of the other disciples to stop her from her quest. She did not allow the presence of Simon the leper to stop her from achieving her goal. She was focused. She did not abort the mission of pleasing Jesus in order to please men. As far as she was concerned, once Jesus was pleased, it really did not matter who else was there? She went out and poured the oil upon his head, then on his feet. And if that was not enough, she undid her hair and let it fall. 
And if that wasn't enough, she then proceeded to wipe her hair on Jesus' feet. Never was there such an act. This daring display of affection reminded me of another incident given to us in the Bible. You see, if you look in Psalms and you look at Samuel, we know of a king named David. We know that his men adored him, so they wanted to please him. And at one point he mentioned, oh, if I could just have water from the gates of uh, Bethlehem. And so what did the soldiers do? They went in to Bethlehem. But David didn't tell them to. Only by hearing his request, they decided to go and risk their lives. But what did David do with the water after? He just poured it on the ground. But yet these men were willing to do something. He did not command them. It was out of their own free will. You see, no one asked Mary to anoint Jesus. She was not instructed as to what she should do. What she did was out of the desire to please, a desire to please Jesus, not please men. Mary was not ashamed. She did her work for Jesus in the open. We must not be ashamed either because Jesus loves us all. Can you imagine being ashamed and being a Christian in this generation when the workers of the devil and iniquity are blatantly showing acts of evil? These people are not ashamed. So why should we be ashamed to represent something that is wholesome and good? God help those who are ashamed. But Paul declares in Romans 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. At the end of it all, all the men could say in the presence of Mary and Jesus, Could not this ointment be sold for more than 300 pence and the proceeds given to the poor? Brothers and sisters, let us never speak evil of the good others do. Rather, let's seek to do the same or better. Today, I want to salute Mary Magdalene because she lived beyond the realm of obedience. She sought to please Jesus, not men. We too can follow in her footsteps and in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, who lived to please his Father in heaven. Let us, brothers and sisters, endeavor to live beyond obedience. Let us learn to live to please. Let us live as a son and not a servant. God bless and take care.